And then again, if you change the conditions, you could make hexagonal patterns of convection cells. If you make uh, the fluid a little bit heterogeneous, you drop a few stones into it or something like that, then the convection cells will become irregular. And uh, you will get patterns like this. So regular convection cells in the earth mantle are very difficult to imagine because there are just too many heterogeneities. And also, the earth is of course a sphere. So if we want to model convection, we will have to take into account the spherical nature of the earth. And I will now show you a movie of a simulation of convection in a spherical earth. It's this one here. So first of all, what should be kept in mind is that this simulation run over 200 million of years. Okay? It's a very, very slow process. And the outside of the Earth is cold, and material is sinking to the bottom, and from the bottom you get these rising plumes coming up. But it's also shown in this simulation is that there is a certain amount of discontinuity. Can you see that this sinking material, this sinking slab, actually changes angle and it stays a little bit at this contact. And this is one of those mental discontinuities where probably the viscosity and the density are changing. So the convection is influenced by this. Okay. But basically, in the model that I've shown you until now, there is still a whole mental convection. Material is going up here. It is moving sideways and it is going down. And at the top, the heat loss is by conduction. This is this thermal boundary layer, which is the upper part of the lithosphere. And then at the bottom, at the contact between the core and the mantle, there is again conduction giving, given to the bottom of the, the layer. And the temperature gradient is like this. So there is much more isothermal central part. And there are these two thermal boundary layers, just like I have drawn on this diagram. <clears throat> so whole mantle convection would be still a very simple process as long as the mantle would be homogeneous, even if we keep into account that the Earth is a sphere. However, we know that the mantle has a number of discontinuities. Uh, I've shown you in two lectures back the velocity structure of the mantle, and we know that there are sharp increases in velocity. We associate those with phase changes in the mantle, and maybe also some chemical changes. So if there is a mantle which has a stratified structure in terms of viscosity, then what you can get is that the convection cells will arrange themselves in layers. So maybe a more logical or maybe a more realistic model of convection in the mantle is that there is not just convection through the whole mantle, but in fact, there are convection cells above the 700 kilometer discontinuity, and there are convection cells below it. This, of course, has major consequences for how the Earth evolves, because convection doesn't just transport the heat out of the Earth, but it also results in mixing. You can imagine that if convection in the whole mantle is active, then 
over hundreds of millions of years, the mantle should be quite well mixed because uh, all the elements, the geochemical elements, are distributed all over the mantle. If we would have two layers of convection cells, it would be possible to have a very large part of the mantle which basically we have never seen in our hands because uh, the xenolith which come up with volcanoes would only be sampled from the top part of these convection cells. So uh, this is just to remind you the velocity of waves between the upper mantle and the transition zones and the lower mantle really changes. There are all these phase changes that are evoked and so Based on this, it is quite logical to expect that the viscosity of these different layers in the mantle is in fact different. So, based on this, there has been for many, many years quite a strong discussion between the geophysicists and the geochemists about the mode or the way of mantle convection. Is there a whole mantle convection or is there several layers of cells? And this would have major consequences for how the Earth evolves physically and geochemically. And this question was for a long, long time completely open because we had no way to really look into the Earth and see how these convection cells function. And the big breakthrough in this question came when the seismic tomography became possible. Maybe you remember in my first tectonics lecture I explained to you how seismic tomography works. What you see in this picture, this is the whole, this is a profile through the whole mantle. This is the discontinuity at 660 kilometers. And the colors are the differences in wave velocity with respect to the standard velocity structure of the mantle. So what you have to keep in mind is that, of course, the velocity in the mantle changes when you go up. I've just shown you the diagram. And these colors are the difference from this standard model. So if it is blue, like here, then the wave velocities are a few percent faster than they should be. And if it is red, then the wave velocities are a few percent slower. Now we know that velocity of mental material is influenced by temperature. So what basically this diagram shows you that there are parts in the mantle, which are colder and therefore have a higher wave velocity. And there are parts of the mantle which are warmer and therefore have a lower wave velocity than normally in a mantle without any convection, a completely stationary standard mantle. So what you see here is that there, there is this thermal anomaly, there is this cold region, which beautifully coincides with the earthquakes. These are the white spots. So this is the Tonga Arc in the Pacific. And you can see that this is the subduction zone. This is the Benioff zone. And the dark region is, in fact, a subducted slab, which is, of course, colder than the surroundings. It goes down into the mantle. It is hung up on the discontinuity at 660 kilometer. But then it continues down into the mantle. So this paper in 97 by Rob van der Hills really was the breakthrough because it started to give us an idea of the size of the convection cells. And the answer is probably somewhere between the whole mantle and the layered convection models. Some of the plates, the subductive plates, some of the convection currents actually make it through to the bottom of the mantle, but not all of them. So there is a hinder at the discontinuity, but not a sharp boundary where nothing goes down. Okay, now, this is a good 
time to have a short break. So we have seen now that uh, convection in the mantle is really quite complex and that at the places where we know that there is subduction, plates are going down into the mantle, that, that those are the places of downwellings or downwards directed currents in this convection cell. Now, of course, the lithosphere is really a very, very thin outer layer of the Earth. And you can ask yourself, how is the lithosphere in the position to actually control these mighty big convection currents in the mantle? It is, it is not very strong. And, but in fact, if you think about it, and if you uh, try to model it, you will find that uh, the fact that the lithosphere is there is firstly a little bit stronger plate on top of the mantle, but also a thermal insulator. So here is a nice diagram to show that. The green part here in this profile is a craton with this lithospheric root, which is really quite cold. And then here is the warmer asthenosphere. And the fact that there is this this gradient in heat flow and thermal conductivity between the cratons and the oceanic lithosphere makes that the convection currents are kind of localized by this jump. So the convection, convection currents actually find it efficient to go down at the place where there is this lateral jump between the craton and the oceanic lithosphere. And this is uh, seen in uh, many different places on the Earth. So these are some global tomography maps. This is South Africa on this side, and this is the um, Mid-Atlantic Ridge, and this is Africa. And you can see that there are very cold routes below Africa and also South America. In the middle, it's of course quite hot. This is the mid-oceanic ridge, but the cold subducted slab is actually localized at the edge of the South American craton. And this can be explained by this lateral jump in thermal conductivity and thermal structure. So mental convection is a very, very complicated process. This is one of the famous pictures, uh, which is now in the, quite a lot of the textbooks, showing many of the processes which are going on. So there are the circulation patterns, the material is being mixed geochemically. Uh, there is, of course, the mid oceanic ridges where material is melting and uh, forms the magma and the oceanic crust. Uh, at the bottom uh, is this D two prime, D double prime layer, which is the boundary between the core and the mantle. And we are now uh, learning, again, from seismic uh, tomography and seismic techniques, uh, a lot more about the structure of this D double prime layer. Um, we know that at least some of these slabs which have been subducted make it all the way to the bottom of the mantle. So they lie here at the mantle core boundary. And then uh, there are uh, a lot of models which postulate that there are these sharp upwellings called mantle plumes which make it all the way to the top of the lithosphere where they melt.